I welcome you all in this presentation and we are talking about the weldability of the chromium molybdenum steels and these are the heat resistant steels which are used for uh, fabricating the components uh, used in the thermal power plants uh, like uh, say in temperature range of uh, normally 500 to 650 degree centigrade and uh, the petrochemical industry where um, uh, at the high temperature as well as corrosion resistance applications involve the use of the chromium molybdenum steels. So, uh, in the last uh, lecture I have talked about the general uh, properties of the chromium molybdenum steels, the different uh, chemical compositions uh, of the chromium molybdenum steels and uh, the way by which chromium molybdenum steel weld joints responds to the heat of the welding. Uh, now, uh, we will uh, try to see um, the way by which uh, uh, the kind of the welding metallurgy involved in uh, welding of the metallurgy uh, involved in welding of the chromium molybdenum steels. We know that the chromium in these steels can range from 0.5 to 9 percent while uh, molybdenum usually 0.5 to uh, 1 percent while uh, carbon uh, is generally less than 0.2 percent and uh, in some cases only it may be like uh, 0.35 percent for high uh, carbon cases. So, if we see as a whole the chromium uh, molybdenum concentration in these steels apart from the carbon uh, due to the higher uh, weight percentages of these elements in these steels the carbon equivalent of uh, these steels is found to be very high uh, may be greater than 0.5 and because of this it offers very high hardenability and high hardenability means whatever portion of the steel which is being heated during the welding and getting austenitized like austenite is formed then this austenite will tend to form the martensite and since the if the carbon content in this steel is high like 0.2 and uh, due to the higher chromium and molybdenum concentration uh, it leads to the formation of the high hardness martensite. Uh, so, one of the issues related with the formation of the high hardness martensite is the, the uh, embrittlement of weld as well as heat affected zone and because of this embrittlement there will be tendency for cracking. At the same time development of the residual tensile stresses during the welding of these steels also cannot be overruled. So, there will always be presence of some residual stresses as well as uh, if the hydrogen is involved or hydrogen um, is a enriched in the weld as well as heat affected zone due to the poor control over the over the conditions during the welding leading to the enrichment of the hydrogen in the in, in the weld as well as the heat affected zone then the presence of both these sometimes uh, promote the uh, promotes the um, hydrogen induced cracking or hydrogen assisted cracking. So, these are the two aspects one is the embrittlement of the weld and heat affected zone leading to the cracking and another one is the hydrogen assisted or hydrogen induced cracking due to the presence of the residual stresses as well as in case when the hydrogen is present in the welding environment. Third and unique uh, kind of the aspect which is observed related with this uh, type of the welding is uh, that the creep embrittlement, creep embrittlement. Uh, this is basically associated uh, with the creep crack formation. This is also known as uh, type 4 cracking and this is commonly observed um, in the heat affected zone of the chromium molybdenum steel weld joints. So, about this also we will be uh, trying to uh, we will be talking that what are the factors that lead to the creep embrittlement. So, the first thing is that in order to avoid the uh, embrittlement of the chromium molybdenum steel welds in the weld metal and the heat affected zone the best way is to 
perform the post weld heat treatment. So, this will uh, will not just be relieved, relieving the residual stresses, but it will be increasing the toughness of the weld joints. So, we will be talking about the conditions which are to be used for uh, the post weld heat treatment so that the toughness can be enhanced. However, the post weld heat treatment in general will be reducing the yield strength of the of the of the weld mend. Uh, then, uh, then there is uh, uh, another aspect that in order to control the embrittlement uh, due to the high uh, hardness martensite formation, uh, we may use suitable preheat. So, the preheating helps to reduce the cooling rate and which in turn will also be help uh, helping in reducing the residual stress formation, reducing the hardness of the martensite which will be formed or it will be helping in also uh, easy escaping of the hydrogen if it was there in the weld as well as heat affected zones. So, the delayed cracking and cold cracking tendency is also reduced. We will be talking about the kind of preheat temperatures to be used for uh, uh, avoiding the embrittlement as, uh, as well as avoiding the uh, delayed cracking related tendency. And if uh, the low hydrogen welding procedure is adopted, then certainly the amount of preheat to be used in order to control the hydrogen induced cracking that will be reduced. So, uh, for that purpose we normally prefer to go for the low carbon filler metals, so that whatever weld metal is formed that is of the lower yield strength and of the lower hardness uh, as well as it develops the lower residual stresses, so which in turn will be helping in to reduce the hydro uh, will be helping in to reduce the uh, hydrogen induced cracking due, uh, due to the residual stress formation. As far as the filler metal is concerned, uh, the weld metal composition and accordingly the welding metallurgy to a great extent is influenced by the composition of the weld metal. So, uh, we know that since the chromium, uh, molybdenum and carbon content in the base metal is high, so we will prefer to use the low carbon fillers, but low carbon fillers will be leading to the reduction in the yield strength of the, the weld uh, ment. And if uh, this is acceptable from the service point of view, then we will prefer to use the low carbon fillers, while the chromium and molybdenum percentage in the fillers or the electrodes may be same as that of the base metal, but we will uh, we'll be trying to use the low carbon filler metal if it is acceptable. Filler metal composition directly affects the properties of the weld metal and uh, more specifically the carbon content in the filler or carbon content present in the weld metal has a direct effect on the properties of the weld metal. That is what we will try to see here from this simple diagram what it shows like carbon content is 0 0.04, 0 0.08. Uh, 0.12 and say 0.16. This is weight percent of the carbon in increasing amount. In the y axis, I will say this side we have the, the strength of the weldment increasing from say uh, this is the minimum level 55 ksi. So, the tensile strength uh, ksi uh, in ksi unit uh, say here it is uh, 75 somewhere here. 85, then 100, then 130, uh, say this is 65. On the other hand, uh, this is another axis where we are showing the elongation. Elongation say changing mm, from uh, like say 10, 20, 30. This is the percentage elongation showing the ductility of the steel weld joint. So, we will now try to see that how does the how does the, uh, mm, the, the the tensile strength and elongation of the the 2.25 chromium and 1 molybdenum steel weldments will be uh, this is the base metal how its properties will be changing uh, as a function of carbon content when the properties are tested in as welded condition 
or in a stress relieved condition. So, we will try to see both the variations. So, in one case when the when the, the properties of uh, the weldment uh, of the point uh, 2.25 chromium molybdenum uh, 2.25 chromium and 1 molybdenum steel weldment is tested the kind of variation that we go property variation is like this. So, here the, the, the tensile strength of the weldment as a function of the carbon content on the uh, this is the weld metal properties. On the other hand when, when we perform the stress relieving treatment say exposure of the weldment at 1300 Fahrenheit for 1 hour per inch thickness then the way by which the property you know, variation takes place is uh, you know, the basically the tensile strength is reduced and what we get here uh, we get the reduction huge reduction in the property. So, this is stress relieved and uh, the, the, the tensile strength of the weld metal in a stress relieved condition as a function of the carbon content. So, of course, there is increase in uh, tensile strength with the increase of carbon content, but there is a huge drop in the tensile strength uh, with the uh, stress relieving heat treatment at uh, say 1300 Fahrenheit for 1 hour exposure per unit uh, inch section thickness. On the other hand, ductility also comes down um, uh, hugely uh, with the reduction of uh, with the increase of the carbon content and uh, so, what we will see here uh, like the ductility drops to the 5 percent. This is uh, what is the case in the as welded condition and when we check uh, the same in uh, when we check the same in the uh, in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, stress relieved condition then there is a marginal improvement in the ductility of metal. So, a stress relieved weld metal shows the higher percentage of ductility for a same carbon content uh, uh, while there is a significant drop in the yield uh, in the tensile strength of the weld metal with the increase of carbon content uh, with the increase of carbon content tensile strength is uh, increasing while the stress relieving treatment is reducing the tensile strength significantly. So, that is what uh, this is what we will see uh, in this diagram this also uh, this is the same diagram is showing the, uh, the variation uh, in the um, tensile strength and ductility as a function of uh, the carbon content for 2.25 chromium 1 molybdenum steel. Uh, uh, in as welded condition as well as in stress relieved condition at 1300 Fahrenheit for 1 hour per section thickness. So, what it shows there is a significant increase in the tensile strength in as welded condition, but the tensile strength in uh, stress relief condition is dropped significantly. So, more significant drop in the tensile strength takes place as compared to the kind of benefit that we get in terms of the ductility. So, this is the kind of improvement in ductility which is observed with the stress relieving treatment, but in both the cases whether it is in a stress relieved condition or in as welded condition with the increase of carbon content we are getting increase in tensile strength and the reduction in the elongation or reduction in the ductility of the weldment. Now, um, now we will be talking uh, about the, the Creep embrittlement basically is uh, uh, attributed uh, basically it is attributed to the precipitation of residual elements at prior austenite grain boundaries uh, in the heat affected zone. So, at the grain boundaries some of the undesirable phases precipitates and form the intermetallic compounds and the phases which uh, at a high temperature exposure on high temperature exposure uh, uh, like say this temperature is around 700 Fahrenheit to 1100 uh, Fahrenheit. So, exposure in this temperature range leads to the precipitation of the residual elements at the prior astronaut grain boundaries and this precipitation weakens the material, lowers the ductility and uh, uh, increases the embrittlement of the chromium molybdenum steels especially in the heat affected zone. So, prolonged exposure uh, leads to the 
cracking in the heat affected zone due to the creep embrittlement and this kind of the uh, the the embrittlement is attributed to the uh, means is affected by the composition as well as the heat treatment condition of the plates which are being welded normally this problem is more severe when the the weld joint is used in as welded condition and uh, some of the like normalizing and tampering treatments helps to reduce this kind of embrittlement tendency similarly there are few compositions of the chromium molybdenum steels with the addition of tungsten and vanadium they uh, help also help in uh, reducing the creep embrittlement tendency of the chromium molybdenum steel weld joints uh, since uh, uh, these uh, steels are normally of the high strengths like 100 to 150 ksi so because of the high yield strength of these uh, steels uh, their weld joints are less tolerant less tolerant to the weld discontinuities because these easily provide the uh, high stress concentration to promote the crack growth rate and a premature failure so stress uh, notches all stress razors so the failure of uh, the weldments of the chromium molybdenum steels of high yield strength is significantly promoted by the discontinuities notches and all stress stages in whatever form they are there like sharp change in cross section or very high stress concentration at the toe of the weld so all these will be promoting the crack nucleation as well as it, mm, their growth if these discontinuities are present therefore weld joint design for chromium molybdenum steel this must uh, design must ensure uh, that uh, there uh, are no stress razors stress concentration is minimized as well as mm, there is no sharp change no uh, sharp change in cross section uh, at the toe of the weld or in the cross section of the component or uh, mm, there are minimized the, the weld discontinuities weld discontinuities are minimized uh, because uh, these uh, this kind of the weld joints are less tolerant to the discontinuities and the stress razors and therefore we need to select the such kind of the weld joint uh, which will uh, be reducing the tendency for all these stress razors so normally for high strength weld joint butt joint is used and if uh, the weld joint is there in the low stress areas then only the fillet welds uh, are used so the one very simple thing uh, is that if we need to make the efforts to use the groove butt joint as much as possible so that uh, the unnecessary stress ridges in high strength zone high stress areas of the chromium molybdenum steel weld joints can be avoided and if the weld joints are falling in the low stress areas then uh, maybe we can use uh, the fillet weld joints also so um, so that was about the uh, the kind of the joint design to be used then uh, there is the kind of the preheat which is needed uh, for welding of the chromium molybdenum steels you know whenever we uh, apply preheat preheating of the plate or preheating of the base metal or then interpass temperature whatever preheat is there the same is the interpass temperature is used whenever preheat is applied it will be lowering down the cooling rate of the of weld as well as the heat affected zone this is one thing at the same time it will be increasing the peak temperature being experienced by a particular location in vicinity of the 
the fusion boundary. So, the heat affected zone will be experiencing the higher peak temperature as well as the width of the HAZ which is formed width of HAZ which is formed that increases with the increase of, of preheat. So, um, these are some of the aspects which uh, are uh, which may be favorably used. For example, uh, the reduced cooling rate will be giving more time for diffusion of the hydrogen from the weld as well as heat affected zone. So, that the excess hydrogen can be released uh, uh, can escape out and the second is uh, the martensite hardness is also reduced due to the formation of some of the soft phases because the cooling rate uh, is reduced. So, these are the two uh, very positive sides and maybe uh, the residual stresses are also reduced due to the reduction in the kind of cooling rate which is being used. So, these factors in combination uh, help in reducing the cracking tendency, help in reducing the embrittlement of the uh, chromium molybdenum steel weld joint. So, it is important to use the suitable preheat so that the softer phases can be formed, hydrogen can diffuse out and the low carbon martensite of the lower hardness is formed, residual stresses are relieved. So, these factors will be helping in to reduce the embrittlement of the weld as well as heat affected zone as well as it will also be reducing the hydrogen induced cracking tendency. So, uh, the kind of preheat to be used is directly found a function of the thickness and composition. So, the, these are the two main factors that affect the magnitude of the preheat thickness and the composition. At the same time, uh, it, uh, the preheat temperature is also affected by the, the welding procedure. If we are using the low hydrogen procedures, then the lower preheat temperature can be used. If we are using the filler in such a way that the weld metal will be softer, will be of lower yield strength, will, have, will be having the greater absorption to the hydrogen, then the preheat temperature requirement will also be decreased. So, as an example, if we see, uh, we know that the chromium uh, in these steels can vary from 0.5 to 9 percent uh, as well as molybdenum can vary from 0.5 to 1 percent. So, say for an example, uh, the 0.5 percent chromium 0.5 molybdenum steel uh, needs the preheat of the 100 degree Fahrenheit if the thickness is less than 0.5 inch, but the same the preheat is will be the 300 if the thickness is greater than 1 inch of the section to be welded. Likewise, if you are talking of the 9 chromium and 1 molybdenum, higher chromium and higher molybdenum percentage, then this preheat can be 400 Fahrenheit for thickness less than 0.5 inch and it uh, can be there of the 500 Fahrenheit if the thickness is greater than uh, 1 inch. So, uh, it will depend the kind of pre temperature to be used will be uh, significantly influenced by the kind of uh, the composition, the heat treatment at the same time the lower preheat temperature values can be used using the low hydrogen procedures or when the low yield strength fillers are used uh, like A3, uh, AISI310 or AISI309. These are the austenitic fillers which uh, will have the greater absorption to the hydrogen as well as these will, will be offering the lower yield strength. So, lower residual stresses will be developed and these factors in combination will be favorable from the welding uh, uh, means uh, uh, from the preheat point of view because even the lower preheats will be suitable to develop the weld joint. So, this is what we can see here this list uh, uh, this table shows the kind of preheat temperatures to be used when welding the chromium molybdenum steels using the low hydrogen covered electrodes. So, uh, say 0.5 chromium and 0.5 molybdenum uh, is uh, up to 100 Fahrenheit up, up to 0.5 inch thickness 100 degree Fahrenheit uh, while for higher chromium uh, like uh, 0.5 5 to 5 7 and 9 
chromium this uh, preheat temperature is to 400 degree Fahrenheit. So, for higher the chromium and uh, molybdenum concentration greater will be the preheat requirements. Likewise, higher the thickness greater will be the kind of preheat temperature requirements. So, 400 for up to up 0.5 thickness and over 1 mm it is 500 degree Fahrenheit. So, um, because uh, increasing the uh, chromium and then molybdenum content will be increasing the carbon equivalent which in turn will be increasing the hardenability. So, in order to deal with the increased hardenability we need greater preheat temperature so that cooling rates can be accordingly uh, reduced in order to avoid the embrittlement of the chromium molybdenum steel weld joints. Now, I uh, will uh, summarize this presentation. Uh, in this presentation basically I have talked about uh, the welding metallurgy of the chromium molybdenum steels and uh, the way by which the preheat temperatures will be affecting the various aspects related to the welding of the chromium molybdenum steels. Thank you for your attention.